Hey everybody, Sam with Nobody Else's Auto. We're back here with our new friend Felix, who is the expert in Glen Prey cars. Correct? Supposedly. Well, that's what I've been told. So I'm gonna I was told by a very reputable source that you're the expert in the Glen Prey cars from the Auburn Core Duesenberg factory. So. I probably know more about them than anybody else and have more of them than anybody else. <laughs> so I guess that makes me the expert. <laughs> you were there in the beginning, just like we talked about in the last video. And we're in another shop of yours, and you have a very large collection of these cars. We've got a great, diverse sampling of them just right here. So you said you'd be kind enough to tell us about a few of these that are your own personal cars and kind of what we're looking at here. So obviously, we've done, we've done some other videos about the Auburn Cord Dizen Factory and Glenn Prey and his second generation of the Cord, and then they went into the Auburn Speedsters, and uh, we're all just continuation cars from the originals because they were the factory. So that's right. That's right. So you've got some amazing cars here that uh, just stunning collection. So Thank you. Um, we'll let the expert tell us something about it. Okay. This one here, this is uh, car number 87. Now, you know, there's always mistakes as you go along, but they built two number 87s. Well, it wasn't a problem when they were both in one in uh, Missouri and one in Oklahoma. Well, about three, four years ago, I bought number 87 uh, out from Enid. The, the old man calls me and he said, well, I like to, I, I want to sell my car. I said, why? He said, well, I fell. My kids say I need to sell it. And he said, I'm thinking about selling it. I said, okay. I said, I'll call you back next week, about Wednesday. So he calls me Tuesday. He said, well, you gonna come get this car? And I said, I thought you were just thinking about selling it. He said, well, I am thinking about selling it. <laughs> okay, I said, you think about it and I'll call you next Tuesday, or next Wednesday. But Tuesday he calls me. He said, when are you gonna come get this car? I said, okay, Friday. So I went out there Friday and we were talking. He said, I'll be 100 on my next birthday. And he says, you know, since I fell, he said, I'm not driving too good. I guess I need to sell it. But I'm still thinking about it. I'm like, God, I drive all <laughs> After the you drove days. out there. <laughs> yes. So we, we finally have a meeting of the minds. So I bring the car home. And my neighbor, a young man about 30 years old, he's into the cars. And I told Daniel, I said, Daniel, here's a good car for you. It's a little rough because this car lived 50 years under a carport at the end of the building, uh, the, the apartment building that the old man owned. So the paint wasn't that good. And the, the AC worked. The old man always drove it with the top up and the side curtains on. Huh. So he had heat or air. So anyway, took it to Daniel. A week later, he says, no, it's just more than I want to do. I said, Daniel, have you driven it? Well, I'll just throw it to the house. I said, take it out and drive it. So he takes it out. He drives it. Next week, he comes back and said, I want it. <laughs> so anyway, he, how about two, three years later, two years later, comes up. He's got twins coming. He said, I got to sell a car. I said, why? He said, well, I can't afford to pay, pay you. I said, don't worry about it. I'm not, I'm not taking the, I'm not worried about the money. So if you have it, fine. If you don't have it, fine. You know. So anyway, he's got number 87. Then we bought number 87 from Missouri, brought it here. So we had to make this one a, a GP 87. So anyway, this one here uh, lived at Grand Lake for a while until the guys smashed it. And then we bought it, fixed it up, repainted it, and it now lives in Broken Arrow. <laughs> yeah, this next one, this is a Tater Salad car. <clears throat> Uh, this is number 36, and it's got a 429 in it, automatic. And it, there's no difference between this car and my other one over there, except that's got a red interior, this has a brown interior. But they're the same car, same engine, same drivetrain. So, but this one here I sold to my son, and he had it about two years, and he says, Dad, I'm gonna have to sell a car. 
I said, why? He said, my wife doesn't, she, she doesn't like the attention it draws. <laughs> I said, well, if it, it does draw attention, so I guess. If that's a problem, you don't want one of these. Yeah. That's <laughs> so I brought it back and then I start talking to him later on about why it was drawing attention. Well, he took her out for a ride five times. And they ran out of gas four times. <laughs> but she didn't like the attention. I understand that. I think we've all been there. <laughs> now this little green one over here, uh, this one came from Rolla, Missouri. Uh, Jim owned this car. And Jim passed away and the daughter called me and said that she wanted to sell the car. So I went over there and we made a deal on it and I go to start it and there's nothing, dead. I checked the battery, it's got juice. So luckily a friend of mine had worked on it and lived there in Rolla and I called him. I, I said, Bill, how do you start this car? And he said, well, there's a kill switch on it. <laughs> it tells me about where the kill switch is fired it up, put it in the trailer, came home, and we uh, went straight to the Spaghetti Warehouse because we had a car meeting that weekend. And uh, we went in and ate. And they always ask me, okay, what'd you buy now? <laughs> Every meeting, you know. So I said, okay, let's go out to the trailer and look. So we opened up the trailer and the west, the sun from the west was shining into the trailer. And when I opened it up, that's when I realized it was two-tone. <laughs> Before that, it was so dusty and dirty, you couldn't see the two-tone on it. Well, it's a very pretty green. It both is. Of them. It, it, is. it does look very nice on the car. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, I, I've had people say, if you ever want to sell it, I want it. And I've got <laughs> like four of them that want that. So This is uh, another of the little cords. This also has the 140 and automatic. Uh... I bought this car, God, I don't know, 15 years ago, and I put the interior in it, and then sold it, and then it ended up in Illinois, and the guy up there totally took it apart, rebuilt the engine, repainted it, and just did everything to it, and He's 83 years old, he calls me, he says, well, he says, I need to sell the car, I'm getting too old. I said, why? Well, he says, I just think I need to sell it, so I bought it back. Well, here's, <laughs> and this is number 72, where the, the uh, maroon one over there was, that's number 68. So they're only just a few cars apart. Uh, this is what I'm working on I, yesterday, it was driving me crazy trying to get that figured out. <laughs> okay, this Auburn over here, this is number 40. So it was four cars after that one. This is the first one that I bought. And the, the funny story goes with this, because I found this one and I found number one production car that was for sale. Both at the same price, same <laughs> week. <laughs> so I take the pictures, I go down to Glenn. And I said, Glenn, these are both for sale. And I think you need to buy one of them. And I think you ought to have number one. And he looks and looks. And I said, you make your mind up which one you want. And he looks at it and doesn't say anything. And I said, I'm buying this one. If you want number one, you can buy it. But this, I'm buying this one. So, anyway, went to Arizona, brought this little fella home, and uh, it's been to Auburn several times. Uh, we've changed the tires on this. It had 14 inch, uh, like the yellow one, and this now has 16 inch, which fills out the tire wells much better. Well, it's a very pretty color on this one, also yeah. that burgundy, yeah, the deep burgundy with the chrome, and really pops. Then we've got the little Model T race car. Uh, this one here came from California. I had sent my brother out to go look at that uh, tater salad car. 
and I said, go look at it, see if it's worth buying. So he calls me back a few hours later, and he said, well, the car's been sold. I said, how can it be sold? I just talked to the guy not very long ago. That's why, that's why you sent him over there to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and I said, who bought it? He says, I did. I said, okay, fine. But while he bought that one, he bought this one here. He also bought a 1913 fire truck, which was totally restored. Very, very nice car. Uh, now, all this memorabilia on the walls, this is all stuff that I have collected over the years. And I took some of it out of my uh, bar at, at home, but the bar is still full. Took a lot of it out of my closets. It's full. Out of my my file cabinets, they're still full. So I don't know. I could I could probably do three more rooms with all, <laughs> all my stuff. But anyway, this is kind of our little hangout. We uh, you come around usually about four thirty. We usually have a happy hour here. <laughs> but that's that's our story here, and uh, it's a fun place to be. And we're gonna. Keep going as long as we can, as long as we're upright. <laughs> well, they're beautiful cars, and once again, we want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your evening or out of your day to spend with us, show us this stuff, share your knowledge, explain what you know about these cars. Like I said, you, when you've been around for that long and start, been there since the company basically started, you've pretty much seen it all. So it's great that you have that knowledge and you're willing to share it with all the owners of these cars and all of us on the internet and everything. So. That's right. It's super cool. We can't thank you enough, and we really appreciate you taking some time with us today. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to meet Felix, hearing his stories, and all the knowledge that he has about these cars that he can share. I mean, like I've been told by pretty reputable sources that you're the expert on these Glen Prey cars. So that's, and they're obviously they're awesome machines. They're beautiful machines, and they just draw so much attention because of the design and the beauty of them and that's what makes them cool and that's why we like cars that's why we're here we're in the hobby because it's fun we enjoy it and we like the stories and the history that go along with it so as always if you're on facebook please share the video with your friends invite them to come over like the page hang out with us if you're on youtube please subscribe to my channel check out all the other cool old car video stuff so much cool stuff from the auburn court duesenberg factory and with felix and his knowledge we've got so much content on this stuff it's absolutely amazing and it's been such a fun time. I, Felix, I can't thank you enough. I appreciate your time and spending it with us today with what you shared with us. It's great. So thank you, sir. Thank you. It means a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your evening to hang out with us. And we will see you soon on the next video.